Hello, everybody, and welcome to another exciting episode of Bloody Good Horror. My name's Eric, and I'll be your host for this evening, where we will be discussing the girl with all the gifts, or as I just learned was also called in another country, Melanie, the girl with all the gifts, which <laughs> makes it not sound like a horror movie so much. <laughs> like maybe a comedy or something. A sisterhood. Melanie will never, yeah, Melanie yeah. will never scare anyone. First up tonight, joining us on this glorious Sunday evening, he is the editor-in-chief of BloodyGoodHorror.com and webmaster DJ Mark. His name is Mark. Oh, hey. Wicka, wicka, what? Okay. I was making the motion, but I was not making the sound. Do you think anybody left in our audience understands my Grandmaster B references when I make them? I don't even think I understand oh, that. That's an old family matter. Family matter. Not family matters. Um, Married with children. Yes, yes. That guy right wow. there. He gets it. Uh, Next up. I just figured you were fucking rambling. <laughs> going crazy old man style. So. Next up on the show, founding member of BGH, the new class. Please welcome Sophie. Oh, man. Founding member. That is quite an honor. She's already called us old ones tonight. So, good start. <laughs> When did I do that? Uh, we just inferred that you were calling us old. It's not wow. really. It was I was going to say, I am so young, I already forgot. <laughs> it was more our own insecurity. <laughs> Next up on the show, coming to you from Manhattan, New York City, the business manager of BloodyGoodHorror.com, Mr. John Schnars. Hello, Eric. Man New York City! Managing business, y'all. I do biz. That's right. Yes. Doing some domain business right now, but we can't talk about that. Yeah, it it, it's not working. Yet. The yeah. business is failing. <laughs> <laughs> and last up tonight on the show, host of Sophisticult Cinema, Big Cuddly Bear, coming to you live from Indiana. His name is Casey. Hi. And I am not associated with Sophisticult Cinema. <laughs> is that what I said? Yeah, I, wow. I, I, Instamatic. That's what I meant. Yeah. That's cool. Just more ramblings from the crazy old man. It's Sunday night, you guys. <laughs> I literally could not, I can't remember the last time we recorded on a Sunday night. You're very oh. spun around. Uh, very spun. I'm a little fired up. I'm a little froggy. I don't know if you tell. You shook, bro. Yeah. I mean, we've gone through a time machine and we've gone back probably five or six years. Maybe. Yeah. So I'm on vacation Please. next week. So I asked everybody if we could do it on Sunday night. Everybody was like, actually like, yeah, let's do it. We did. I feel like there was a run where we were doing Sunday mornings. There was. I think we started. Yeah. I think I feel like we started on Sunday mornings, and then over the course of the past ten years, have gradually worked our way into Wednesday. Evenings. Like Sunday at like ten a.m. or something. Something. Another crazy. five years from now, I think we're just gonna round the corner and be back to Sundays. Well, and then there Any? was there was a while too where like when I had to edit the show, sometimes the show didn't come out for like a week. <laughs> we had the turnaround <laughs> time, and now it's like either. this, Chinars. It's like that. Get get right out of here. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, now we basically edit the show live. But... Uh, there's still some work that has to be done. Okay. Okay. Live. Exporting to AIFM. <laughs> <or whatever. laughs> Importing. Exporting. Uh, there's audio <laughs> processing that happens, John. There's some magic that I add to the stew first. Some beeps and some boops. Stew. Yeah. All right. The audio it takes a lot to make a stew. The audio melange, <laughs> if you will. <laughs> Oh, it's a great reference, Mark. Strong. <laughs> Too many cooks. Coming Too strong. Many. Too many oh, cooks. Man. That's uh, throwback. Bloody good horror. It's perfect tonight that Sophie has joined us because um, the cooks, the bloody good horror cooks, of which there are too many, have, oh, been, <laughs> have been in the lab working on a little something, a little something special for the patrons. Do you want to talk about it a little bit, Sophie? Yeah, sure. So we're going to try rebooting Tweet with BGH with a couple of upgrades. So now it will be served to you Mystery Science Theater style, so you can see Spencer and Evan and I make fun of the movie in real time. You can still tweet with us and we'll respond, but you'll be able to watch our beautiful faces instead of just reading our lifeless words on your Twitter feed. Yeah. Like a, like I think a, your words are full of life, actually. Oh, thank you. Yeah. You know, like a spooktacular, but a little more classy. I picture you guys being a little classier. I don't know. Let's not go that far. Then the time that we watched, we... we watched the House of Wax remake as a practice, and I classy is not a word I would use to describe our conversation. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Well, that there, movie has a real special spot. In there's my nothing home, classier than the time we drank 40s and watched Zombieverse. Is that the 40 episode? <laughs> yeah. God, I think I still have a headache. From oh, did we watch? Did we drink 40s when we did the Sharknado one? I think it was Zombievers. It could have been. It, I don't remember. I literally texted Mark the next day, like, is there meth in 40s? Like, I haven't had one in a long time. Like, what the <laughs> hell happened to me? Like, that he texted me like I would know. It was well, ridiculous. as a Molotov scientist, <laughs> I think Seriously. you uh, 
ingested liquid pennies, basically. Um, <laughs> that is your side hustle, right? Yeah. 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 So who's going to be on that? <laughs> who's going to be on that with you, Sophie? So it will typically be Spencer and Evan and I, although we may have special guests coming in and out. We're going to get back to a monthly schedule with drinking games. So we are back next weekend, Friday, June 9th at 9 p.m. Eastern. And the first month, it's going to be open to everyone. And then after that, it's going to be patrons only at the $3 and up level, I believe. Great. Delightful. So bloodygoodhorror.com, if you want to check out, find out, well, like, like she said, we'll send the first one out to the masses. And then if you're interested in that kind of thing, uh, and you're already a patron, it's an extra perk you get. If not, you can check out patreon.com slash bloodygoodhorror. I like having a pen while I'm talking, you guys. I can, like... <laughs> Excellent, exclamate things. Hey, John. Yes, Eric. You know how I know summer is here? Uh, well, it's not because of the weather. Uh, so I was gonna say swamp ass. Dude, it's like fifty-five degrees <laughs> out no, right it's, now. It's very muggy here in uh in the great northeast, and I we have the air conditioning on, and I'm still sweating. So. Yeah, it's not uh, fifty-five wow. here either. That also it's... means, John. Yeah. The box office blowing up. It's it's uh it's getting hot, yeah, Eric. Hot it's heavy. getting hot in the box office, that's what's, for sure. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> you salty bastard. Oh Christ. Uh yeah, I mean, well, we're like we're a solid month plus into into blockbuster season. Um but maybe our first real surprise of the summer, Wonder Woman. Um, which if you had asked me, I probably would not have had high hopes for in terms of performance. The reviews came in super duper positive, uh, over the last week, which I think helped. And it did a well, hundred million dollar dues. I actually am surprised too, but you got to think about it. Like it's a very unique thing. Like when have we ever seen a superhero film led by a woman on this level? The trailers looked really legit. So, yeah, I hadn't see. I actually did not and, see a trailer. And honestly, this, so. I feel like as much as people are hating on DC, and we've done a little bit of it here, people want them to be good, right? Because they like the characters. Like you want to see a friggin' awesome Batman movie, or you want to see. And so every time it comes out, you're like, it's this like uh, Stockholm syndrome thing. So I, mean, I feel like, wow. I, in other words, I'm just saying I don't think they've completely run out of um, no, no. goodwill I mean, yet with the new movie going public. <laughs> and and a movie like Wonder Woman has the potential to have much. A farther swath of people who don't have no idea what DC is anyway, you know. I, well, my point would be more like I, I don't disagree with you, but like when you get outside, when you're talking DC and you get outside of Superman and Batman, like Wonder Woman is like, you know, idea, some I mean, name recognition. The idea but like, that they could make a huge movie based on that and did really well is pretty mind blowing. I'll definitely give. Oh yeah, that. yeah, no, totally. Because it's like so, you think Wonder Woman, you think like Linda Carter, which is like maybe the silliest thing ever with her invisible plane or lasso so it's impressive what they've done with it no no 100 percent. i'm i am very interested to see it uh which i would not have believed i would have said when you told me they were making a movie yeah um yeah so it's a huge win i mean warner brothers there's actually been like a lot of articles recently there they've been they've been in bad bad spot they uh they fucked up a lot of stuff they have they i mean the king arthur thing like after that happened people were legit like is this the end of Warner Brothers? Yeah, you know, like at that level. I, I still. Like, who the fuck? Seriously, who thought anyone would go see that movie? Uh, now, <laughs> to be fair, I did not go see it, but I really want to see it. Like, it oh, like, I'm gonna go for a five dollar Tuesday movie to see that. It looked like no. a movie that I might enjoy. Is all I'm saying. Now, Charlie that doesn't... Hunnam. Yeah. And Source. <laughs> all right. It's all right. Like, I was gonna uh... say, is it? Am I the only one that doesn't think Charlie Hunnam's that much of a draw? Yes. Yes. I mean, no. obviously not, because the movie would be doing better if you were. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not saying he's a draw. I'm just saying he's a dreamboat. You're just saying that you are you are drawn to him, yes, whether or not he you. is a, an out and out draw, like a moth yes. to a flame, Mark. Mm. There yeah. you go. Uh, he's a little yeah, snarzy. A little bit. A little bit. Yeah. But a big a big win for Warner Brothers. Um, uh, Captain Underpants. Uh, also not. Well, no, it actually didn't do that great. I guess, but. You know. Did anyone read those books when they were younger besides me? This Probably is literally not. the first time I'm hearing of this even as a movie that I didn't know it came out. <laughs> I am the next I am the next oldest person from Sophie and I was in the uh in the goosebumps generation probably not the captain Fair underpants. Enough. Well, generation. I had I had younger siblings, so I feel like the media that I got was like I kept getting kid stuff longer cuz I had younger siblings. Oh, see, I had older friends, siblings, like, so I had old yeah, yeah, 80s and 70s right, and 80s. Right, right, right. 
Um, no, so we it's actually kind of a week off next week, unless you consider the Mummy a, uh, a are we, summer are we, blockbuster. Uh, no. Are we doing the Mummy? We are definitely going to do it, but oh, wait, what wait. also is coming up This next is what's going to is... decide this. Can you tell me how long the Mummy is? Uh, yeah, I can. It seems like but, it might be too uh, long. I... We're, we are, it's an hour and 47 minutes. We are not covering it next week, though. Can you All tell right, me just... how tall Tom Cruise is? Ugh. All right. If you dial it back, <laughs> next week we are covering It Comes at Night. Yeah. Which is coming the hot. same week as The Mummy. That looks sweet. So, that mm-hmm. looks much better than The yeah. Mummy. No, it looks real good. Um, yeah, we actually, so we have that. We have 47 meters down, which I've seen legit nothing about, but it is still listed as coming out on the 16th. I've, um, seen some, I've been trailers? actually seen some previews. What is this? I, no, yeah, I have not. I what? haven't either. Uh, it's, it's, like a, shark- it's a sharky movie starring Mandy Moore. Yeah. What? Oh, I have, Mandy yeah. Moore fame. I have not heard of this uh, at all. I presume that she is 47 meters underwater. Oh. Yes. That... Yep. Okay. There she's, we go. Uh, she's on a hot streak now. People love that show she's on. Yeah, they do. Like, love that she seems show. Like, she seems like a nice lady. Wait, what show is she on? She's on This, this is, is us. us. This is Us. Oh. Listen, man. The, yeah, on NBC. People who, the people who are into that show, way into that show. They're, I mean, they're going to come out for a shark movie. It's a great show. <laughs> it's a great show, and she's movie very good on it. I also think the movie was supposed to come out last summer, and then they didn't release it because they didn't want to release it against the Shallows. Oh, interesting. It's basically Perfect. like a reverse Shallows instead of being above the water. Reverse, reverse, very far very deep. Deep. It's called Deep. It's called Deep. It's called Deep. Um, yeah, so we will probably cover The Mummy the week of the 23rd because it looks like the only release that week is Transformers 5. If it's still in theaters. I presume we are not covering. Uh, yeah, at yeah, the fair. Um, uh, I watched that This Is Us. I watched the pilot of that show. And it's, it is, Mark's right, it's really good. But I was like, this looks like it's gonna have too many emotions for me. Like I don't need to. Oh feel my it. god, it's there's so many emotions. Like I don't hey, need to feel. There's a guy who loves Dawson's Creek. That that's... whole show is emotions. Yeah, that's true. It's different though. I was like, on oh, your own is... trap there. These are like real adult emotions though. Yeah, exactly. It's like deep shit. You <laughs> not know? like not like teen angst. Talking it's like not Jim man. Vanderbeek crying on a dock. Yeah, exactly. That's just like <laughs> puberty shit. You know, this is like deep uh... down repressed Irish kind of shit that I don't want to get into. Yeah. So Eric it's... doesn't want to wait for his life to be over. Oh, no, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh you guys. Can we just make it through episode without mentioning Dawson's Creek? That's really so all we're I talking didn't... about. I we're talking about it. television in the most awkward of segues. Uh, our good buddy Evan has been reviewing episodes of Twin Peaks: The Return on BloodyGoodHorror.com. Nice. Ooh. So we do. We have a. We have one rule about TV reviews on BGH. People can review any TV show they want as long as they review the entire season. So Evan is Evan. Sophie's familiar with that rule because she asked me mm-hmm. if she could review Ash vs Evil Dead, which you can also find at bloodygoodhorror.com. Uh, and Evan, Evan and I have struck a similar contract for the review of Twin Peaks. And I'm actually. What happens I'm, if he doesn't finish the season? You don't want to know. I don't know. No one's ever, no one's ever yeah. tested my. No one's before. tested Mark and his. So we'll see. <laughs> yeah. Mess with the bull, you get the horns. <laughs> I'm, newly, I'm newly emboldened with my slack dad status, yeah. so we'll see. You know, <laughs> coming, coming down hard. <laughs> um, he will straighten his tie and give you what for. But yeah, man. If you, uh, if I, if you are a fan of Twin Peaks and you are like, man, they don't really, you don't really get weird shit like Twin Peaks anymore. Yeah. Uh, rest assured that at least the first three episodes are super fucking weird. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I hear, based on Evan's reviews, that it, it starts to get more normal in Twin Peaks terms or more grounded, but the first three episodes are pretty ridiculous. Hmm. I was just going to say I need to grab Evan uh, er, on Slack so he can explain what the hell is going on in those first three episodes because that's all <laughs> Does I've watched. Show, I, wonder, like, oh. I wonder if Showtime still has a deal with like Netflix, like if that stuff will go to Netflix. It's got to go somewhere I can watch it, right? Well, the the original run is on Netflix right yeah, now. Yeah, I should go back. I know I should go back. I'm sorry, you guys. I'm still trying to finish up the second <laughs> season. It's you don't have to apologize same. to me. No, I got like one. I got one episode <laughs> in the second season. I got angry because I'm like, this is not even the same show. I'm not watching the same show anymore. It's oh. it was upsetting. <laughs> It's really not worth getting angry. I mean, they made the it. The first for you season is like so. <laughs> the first season is weird, but it's super coherent and it's like doing all this great stuff, playing with genres. And the second season starts, and he's been shot, and he sits up, and he's like, and he starts talking, and I'm just like, what, what the fuck is happening? 
If you had that reaction to the first episode, the second season is going to be really hard on you. I know. So I'm like now <laughs> I've had a couple years now to like it's really just people deal. getting shot and then like sitting and then up. sitting up and talking. <laughs> I've had a couple years now to deal with his emotions. So I've been thinking, maybe, I don't know, maybe it's it's time to go back. There you go. So many emotions, man. I almost bought the whole VHS box set once at a flea market. It's really sweet. It's got like the picture. I think it has the picture from like the welcome sign in the town. Like across all of VHS, and it says like Twin Peaks. Cool. I would hope that it says Twin Peaks on it. Yeah. And it says <laughs> Animaniacs. <laughs> they have yeah, baloney in their sacks. Hey, there. that's coming back. I just saw that on the internet. Yeah. Did, I, oh, also, yeah. Yeah. Man, that was that, honestly that, that was kind of past. Like I was not into. I feel like that was too. I don't know. I just missed that. That would have been me. That would have been when I was a kid. Yeah, that, that was like Mark was late, way Mark was way 90s, into late 90s. like Mark was way into Rocco's Modern Life. Oh. But I was like, I don't. This isn't. You can't do that on television. Like, what is this shit? Bro, he's an eccentric wallaby. It's great television. <laughs> I was like, where is uh, the green My slimes? friends and I were graduated in '92, and we still watch the shit out of. Yeah, Animaniacs, I was gonna say so. Animaniacs. I definitely watched it. Was '93, so yeah, it was the first episode. So it aged well. Wasn't my jam. Well, I love Looney Tunes. Duck so Tales. I was like d- super in on it. Was more oh, than... John, please tell me more because I love that sentence and I want to know more about it. <laughs> what? <laughs> Looney Tunes? Like, who's your favorite Looney Tune? Oh. Probably Foghorn Leghorn. <laughs> <laughs> if I had to pick one. What? What? Man? That's a, right. that's a legit someone, answer. Someone out there needs to get on some Photoshop Jesus. things right now. Thanks. You could not have answered that. Maybe Yosemite Sam would have had a better answer, but I'll take Foghorn Leghorn. Fog- <laughs> I'm just thinking of it. You do have, when you get drunk, you have Foghorn Leghorn, like Tennessee. <laughs> Foghorn Leghorn is the literal worst character in Looney Tunes. <laughs> He's the fucking worst. What are you talking about? He's terrible. <laughs> He's so dumb. Screw this movie. I want to talk about John's <laughs> Looney Tunes. Hold on. Do you are you like against all Looney Tunes or no. is it like Foghorn there are Leghorn such better Looney Tunes like everyone except Foghorn Leghorn? <laughs> That's just come on. That's just insanity. He's the best. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> all John the things taking we talk, a hard stance. I've yeah. literally never heard anyone else take all, on. All the things we talk topic. about on this show that John is completely <laughs> indifferent about and is just like whatever. But this he's really fired yeah, up. This about. is fucking amazing. We got it. We might need to schedule an Eric show to fully unpack this. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to know you have your priorities straight, John. <laughs> what? This is like a priority. It's just like you know. Yeah, I don't know. You sound really heated. If I have to go to bat for a Looney Tune, you know, it's gonna be Foghorn <laughs> Leghorn. Fucking Foghorn Leghorn. <laughs> oh, you guys. Hey, Looney Tunes is where I learned the word jackass. So. <laughs> oh yeah, they used go. to say that. That's true. That is true. <laughs> Oh, it's the best. Um, so oh. Joe is out tonight. We should probably get this back in the rails here, although that was fun. Joe is out tonight, <laughs> so no beer recommendation. Does anybody – hold on. I want to get this Foghorn Leghorn gif into the video that Casey sent me. Thank you. Um, <laughs> is anybody drinking anything fun tonight before we move on? I'm having a grapefruit uh, sculpin. Ooh. Summary. Mm-hmm. I'm drinking some indiscriminate brown alcoholic water that nice. I can't remember what it is because I poured it into a decanter and immediately recycled the bottle. You should, are, you using the <laughs> I one I, are you using the one I gave you? The decanter? Yeah. Didn't I oh, give the, you like a, the globe thing? The globe one? US, I gotta find something USOB. worldly to put in the globe. You SOB. Alright. Mark's dead to me. <laughs> it is time to review the girl with all the gifts. This is it, Jennifer. Your big break in TV. Fuck the front time, bitch. Main feature. And we're back. Do you guys want to hear um, Joe's bumper just because it's awesome? <laughs> sure. Play it. I'm starting to feel like I, I like jinxed it because since that first episode you played it, Joe and I have not been on the same episode, so I haven't heard it in context. Since Honestly, we, one, since of my, it made one of my favorite things last week was Casey's face because I didn't realize he had never heard it before. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty awesome. <laughs> Really, oh, after good. all the things on the show, I'll, I'll be most proud of that. And also uncovering John's Looney Tunes fetish. Um, <laughs> so, John, 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 John. 
Yeah, so. Um, <laughs> this is actually a swerve. We're not here to review this movie tonight. We're just here to have a hearing about your ties to Russia. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair a few fair. myself yeah, and a few of our twitter followers decided that you actually that like i may have to add jared kushner to the list of schnarz likes like as, even if you don't want like it because it's like somebody was making a convincing uh argument i was like you know what i think I, we don't actually look anything like uh I, I beg to differ i mean in that we are both like white men in our mid-30s i Here, guess here's the difference between you and ham schnars you believe in words i do that's true you believe, words have meaning eric i, I say that a you, lot you, you believe so. in the power of words and the power of words to help the over the the every man overcome Mm -hmm. anything in life that's all you need it's, are it's words. not working super great right now but listen john in every movie you got to go through the dark middle chapter before you get to the, the good stuff you know that's fair just that okay. we're we're just in empire strikes back right now this is the beginning it's when the uh uh the empire is kind of overtaking the hoth base yeah, it doesn't look it doesn't look very good i'm like sleeping inside of a What's it called? Dead Tauntaun. Yeah, Tauntaun. Yeah. I was going to say Tatooine. I was like, that's not right. Um, but don't worry, because by the third act, you will lead us out of that dead Tauntaun with your words. <laughs> At least one of us believes that. Yeah. <laughs> I got to believe in something, John, or I got nothing left. So please bring us the word of the day. Eric, today's word is famished. It's F-A-M-I-S-H-E-D, and it means extremely hungry. That's mm. the only definition. So famished, uh, it comes from the Latin fames, which actually just means hunger. Famies. Famies. Uh, yeah, famished. What does that have to do with this movie? Um, so The Girl with All the Gifts is a film about zombies. Uh, and I'm going to go on a slight, uh, you know, side uh, note here. But um, it's sort of annoying to me when there's movies that are set in, like, the future or present where there are zombies, but they don't call them zombies. Because it's like, what, do they call what them universe here? are they living in? What do they call them here? They call them hungries. I kind of like it. I kind of like it. it uh, is it hungries? Like I thought it was something else. No, it's, Is that what um, it was? Hungry? Am I crazy? No, no, it's definitely hungry. I'm pretty. Um, I would John say. is right. Yes. Okay. So, it's just weird to me. Like they basically ask you to imagine a universe where no one has ever heard the word zombie, and then because they had to like come up with another name for it. Mm -hmm. I mean, whatever. It's somewhat of a. It's not necessarily an attack on this movie because it happens like a ton of other movies too. But uh, they do it here. They call them hungries. Uh, you know, and hence famished because hungry seemed a little too easy. Hmm. Yeah. Great. Mm -hmm. All right, John. Love it. Please tell us what this is about. I heard this was based on one of those book things. It is based on a book. Uh, in fact, the book, the author, Mike, Mike Carey also wrote the screenplay. Uh, so he he's both the you know the original source material writes the screenplay. So he's apparently and I did a little bit of research before that we jumped on, but he's apparently best known as a comic writer. So he's done a ton of work for Marvel, ton of work for DC. He wrote Lucifer. He's written like a ton of um, I think Fantastic Four, X Men. Like he's he's kind of been all over in comics. So he writes this book. Um, it gets picked up, turned into turned into this this film it's directed by a guy named colm mccarthy um it, it's definitely british um it is set in london the the director colm mccarthy is i think this might be his first sort of like theatrical feature he's done a ton of work um on tv so he's he's directed like a ton of bbc stuff um just you know a lot of stuff people would have seen the tutors uh sherlock things like that so um peaky blinders he did a bunch of episodes. Um, but yeah, so he's got... Uh, the, he directs this movie uh, with, with Mike Carey writing. Um, it's set in London. It tells the story of this this girl, uh, the girl who, in fact, has many of the gifts, uh, named Melanie. Um, and we open... Melanie is, like, essentially living in a prison, uh, which is being run by a bunch of soldiers. And through... Fairly quickly, we come to learn that... Um, 
they're living in basically a post-apocalyptic future where zombies, hungries, um, are kind of all over, and there are these sort of military outposts. Um, and on this one, they have all these kids. So Melanie, and then she, she's probably like 13 or 12. I don't know. Casey might have a better guess. Um, but, uh, well, just because I, I know little kid stuff. I don't know. Once they get over 10, it's like they're all the same. Um, <laughs> but uh, so, so all these kids are like living on this base. They're being educated and like you don't really know what's going on with them at first. And uh, they're they're kind of like wheeled around in these like wheelchairs, and they're all locked down. They they have you know their heads are strapped down, uh, but otherwise they're talking. They seem super normal. And Melanie seems like incredibly not just normal, but like very smart and, and intelligent. And so, um, but we see her kind of going going in, uh, to this class taught by Gemma Ar Arterton. Arter Arterton. I know, I know how to say her name now. Uh, it, is that how you say it? It's or Gemma. I was saying Gamma last time we did a movie with her, and everybody's making fun of me, which I want to point out. I believe was Hansel and Gretel, Witch Hunter. Yeah, we. I mean, we've done a. She's actually been in a ton of movies. I think. Oh, she did that vampire yeah. thing too that I liked a lot, where she's like yeah. taking, taking care of the other little kid vampire or whatever. And yeah. wasn't she in uh, Voices, the Ryan Reynolds yep. joint? Or yeah. I, yeah. I don't. Yeah, she's the. Remember that? Well, spoilers. Voices like his dog is talking to him or something. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, yeah, so she's like the teacher of the, this like group of students. And you also have Glenn Close uh, as Dr. Caroline Caldwell. She's essentially studying these kids. And what we come to learn is that these kids are sort of like halfway in between the hungries and people. And so Glenn Close feels like they are the key to creating a, a vaccine for the the essential the, the zombie disease the zombie virus it's not a virus here instead it's a fungus which does become somewhat relevant in in kind of the third act although it's it's kind of like a it's relayed much later in the film the only other like major character is uh sergeant parks played by patty considine um he's basically the the sort of like guy who runs the base the setup of, of most of the action is that the base that they're on is is essentially overtaken by the zombies and so they have to run and you have the teacher you have melanie you have the the sergeant and you have um the doctor they go on the run played by did you, did you mention her already oh you probably did i wasn't paying oh attention. yeah glenn close yeah. yeah no thank you for, Sorry, for listening. i was, I was but, doing, um, listen i was doing bgh business john six-time academy award winner i guess did you guys notice that it yeah I believe it, the phrase it, you're looking for is boss ass bitch. Yeah, no, I mean, for sure. But, uh, well, and we can get to it. So this is on Amazon Prime right now, and it was super interesting to me. Like, the only, like, literally the description of the film is six time Academy Award nominee Glenn Close stars in. It's like, okay, what is this movie about? Which is funny because <laughs> I actually thought she died off in the first act. I couldn't tell if you were supposed to think that or not. And then she comes back, she pops up like a minute later, and I was like, oh. I was confused yeah, yeah. about whatever just happened. She's definitely awesome. she but was I, just not in a scene. She but was I thought, it. right? <laughs> but I thought maybe she, they were doing like a, a Janet. Eric Lee. gets confused when characters aren't on screen. <laughs> <laughs> I thought maybe they were doing a Janet Lee kind of thing. Yeah. No. So they go on the run. They're trying to meet up with like the rest of the army folk, and and there's like a bunch of other twists and turns. But uh, that that's the general setup: is is them being on the run and and trying to survive in post-apocalyptic land. Great. Thank you, John. Hey, Mark, you showed up last. Why don't you go first? <laughs> hey, I was still on time. I just want to point that out. It was the Sorry. earliest Mark has been to a show in years. So I'm going to enact a new thing. If you show up late, then you're in detention. You're penalized. So you're making this rule based on the fact that I was on time this week? Is that... No, uh, whoever, right. let's the new just... rule is if you're the last one to show up, you're late. I don't care what time it is. <laughs> let's just, let's, just get, let's just keep this rolling. <laughs> Anywho, uh, I thought this movie was great. I, I actually, you know, we've watched so many zombie movies. Um, I was thinking about, I was looking through like past best of lists, their best and worst of lists. And I and Wormwood came up, which like, I, I don't know if it was the last zombie movie we watched, but pretty close. Like we, you know, we used to watch them a lot more frequently. Uh, and I think that this obviously is really helped by the strength of the cast. 
I think it's a great cast. I think the concept is really cool. I think that it's it's like like small enough that you can follow. Hey Mark, you're roboting a little bit. Some pretty huge. I mean, I'm I literally can't do anything about. That. I'm just letting, <laughs> just letting so. you know, buddy. Cool. Uh, great. So now I can hear you. I don't know. I just thought. Oh, good. Uh, I thought this was a great movie, and I think that it's. Uh, I hope that lots of people watch it. I'm just gonna stop talking. Sophie. Uh, I also like this movie a lot. This was a rewatch for me. I actually reviewed this movie for the site a while back. So I rewatched it earlier today to remind myself of things I might want to talk about. I think that the score in particular is really strong in this movie. Um, for anyone that saw Arrival, I thought there was a lot of parallels between this really kind of weird, ethereal, dissonant score that doesn't necessarily seem like what you would expect in a movie like this, but I think it does a really great job to kind of set some of the tension in a lot of these scenes. And I'm sure we'll get into it, but I think that the little girl that plays Melanie is fantastic. I think this movie would not have worked without someone oh like that in the yeah. child actor role, and she was fantastic. Oh, like it so easily could have been totally tanked by not the right child oh, actor. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I think, Eric, you mentioned that in the in the email conversation. Like, it re they do hang a lot of this movie like, on her. Okay. So. I mean, literally at yeah. one point, we can get to it, but literally at one point... She is asked to act the following scenario wherein she has met other semi-intelligent zombie children and is taking on the alpha and has to like bark and growl at them in a way that is like she's trying to control them. And she kind of works. She kind of pulls it off. Like the other mm -hmm. kids were terrible. The other, And their costumes were the worst. So like it really brought into contrast like how good she had been, I feel like, the rest of the movie. They, yeah. they, they, the, other, the, other, the other kids look like the Geico cavemen, basically. <laughs> it was, like, really ridiculous. I will say, though, that they I think that weird. there's a scene towards the beginning when all of the kids in the classroom kind of, you know, zombie out. And I thought that all the kids in that scene were fantastic. Yeah, Because that scene would have been mm. terrible if the kids weren't scary. And that scene was really yeah, weird. Pretty decent. Well, they did. St now we're like going down a little bit of a rabbit hole, but there's like some effect they did with the jaw. They were doing some kind of like, um, like a, a extra frame thing where like, and they did that actually in a lot of the action scenes, where you shoot like extra frames, and that gives it that very crisp, like kind of jerky mm. motion to it. Yeah, John, what do you think of this movie? I liked it a lot. Um, it's like, it's a, it's. There's there's some things I don't know some there were some flaws I would say that that make it not like the best film I've ever seen territory but that said like it's it does some really creative stuff with the zombie sort of mythos um, which is super played out um, and, and kind of has been I mean it's kind of been on the wane I mean other than then Walking Dead sort of still continuing to be a fairly strong franchise on TV. We don't see a whole lot of stuff in the theaters anymore. Um, and, and yeah, it did some interesting things. I think, um, you know, I, I agree on all the acting was really strong. It's, I guess if I had to nail down one problem, it's that it is a ton of plot. Like there is a lot of plot um, because you have to get through all of the sort of like, uh, you know, set up in history and like, why are we in this situation? And they have to kind of like work to the point where you fully understand all of the intricacies. It's, it's also done pretty well though. Like it's not super info dumpy. Like they, they work them into no, no, the no. story. Well, yeah, totally. It, it's just that like, it's a lot. And so like, you know, there's not a ton of scenes where there is not information being like kind conveyed. of most movies, right. You get that stuff out in the way early. But this movie, I feel, yeah, because like it literally at the point that Glenn Close is telling me about fungus pods, I'm like, holy shit, this this is like an hour in, and this movie's still telling me things. <laughs> yeah, 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 yes, exactly. Um, and and literally, that's basically happening right up until the end. Um, we we definitely should throw down a spoiler warning at some point. I I actually loved where this movie ended up going. Um, I, I I mean, I didn't know this was a book previous. Like, I'm almost curious to read the book. Like. It, it, I could see this being a better book than the movie. I mean, and that's like a dumb thing to say because a lot of books are better than movies, but I, I really enjoyed a lot of it. And I think, um, I don't know. I, I'm like, you know, I'd be, I could see him, I, I can see what you're saying. Cause I could see him handling the info dumps better. Yeah. Well, you just have more time to like work through stuff. And a lot of the like emotional stuff here, um, it is basically carried 
like they, they're doing it while also doing all the info stuff too. So like in a, you could almost have turned this into like a mini series type of situation, which, you know, all, everything is a goddamn mini series or a television show now. <laughs> but so like, I'm not saying it has to be, but there's like enough here. Like the world is like rich enough that you could have done that in my mind. Which is not necessarily a bad thing. I, and again, I really like the movie, so yeah. it, it, I'm just somewhat throwing some Casey some water. Uh, I'm right there with everybody. I love this movie uh, quite a bit. There's, I could see. Uh, I agree with everybody. Like I said, I could see some of what John's saying. There's some. I probably didn't hit me as uh, noticeably as it might have with uh, John, uh, but. With, there's some of the stuff when this info dump is going on. There's been, there was a couple times what I'm trying to say is that I found myself reaching for my phone and you know, looking something up on the internet. To the movie's credit, I was looking up something about the plot or the book or something like that. Just But there was a couple times where I they got a little thick on that information dump that it was going through out there that it did stretch a little long. Other than that, I mean, really, though, it was it was not... It's a nitpicking thing, like John said, because this movie is really great. The cast is fantastic. The story is great. Um, we'll probably get hate mail for calling them zombies, but we're not going to start that debate. <laughs> no, because that's the thing dumb people argue about, so we don't worry about that. <laughs> I, yeah, I was going to say, I don't care. Fucking, no. Who cares? It's a monster they and did it a good, you. I do really like, though, how they explain this stuff, and this game, uh, I think from what Sophie is telling us on email, that the game came out there is a game, The Last of Us, came out at the same time as the book. They're pretty similar setups. Yeah. Uh, as far as the plot points and stuff that are going on there. But this was uh, handled really well. And there was, not having read the book and not knowing what it's about going into the movie, there was, they did a really good job with, like, the first act of that movie when you're seeing the kids in their instructions, classrooms, stuff like that. I didn't know for sure where they are going for quite a while. Yeah. Yeah, this movie super surprised me in that it made me, like, I was into a zombie movie in 2017. That news is kind of mind-blowing to me because probably second to, like, supernatural movies, I just could care less about zombie movies these days. And I don't necessarily feel like, oh, thank God somebody did another one of these. It's more kind of along the lines of, um, wow, it's actually pretty cool that they managed to do something interesting with it. And I think in a lot of ways for me, it feels like almost like a remake or a continuation of something like Day of the Dead, where the the core setup is very similar. Like you have this small group of people left over. In Day of the Dead, you kind of get the feeling like they're the literal last people on Earth, where in the, as in this one, it seems like there might be other pods of people. Like we never run into them, but it sounds like they've got communication with somebody. Um, but... You know, so the core setup is like this uh, science t scientific team, and they're being um, kind of protected by these military guys. But what's nice about this and departure from Day of the Dead is like everybody's really well rounded. And Day of the Dead, the military guys are just all like evil ass, like mean assholes, which is like not real life, you know. So it's yeah, kind of. I, I the, thought they were going to go there with yeah. this, and they they but rounded it out. But it's like great though. What they do is like everybody's just really well rounded. Like you. The military guys are on edge. They're edgy and they're they're harder people, but you get to like the human core inside, you know. And it's like and and so even you know, really all the main ones have a sort of redemptive story arcs, and they they're not even really bad. You know what I mean? They're just sort of like it's their job to keep people safe, and they have these teachers getting attached and they see what happens you know uh, so i would say they are pretty explicitly bad in the beginning i mean the beginning, when they're like coming sure. in and well like there's a scene calling yes. them abortions yes that's <laughs> like, pretty bad but but what that's what's great about it is like it humanizes everybody by the end including the this term little, of endearment including this yeah. little girl and that's another i think it probably intentional parallel to day of the dead where the core thing of day of the dead is arguing like how much humanity is left in these things and is there can we train them or like, can we find some way to get them to, to, you know, exist alongside of us. And here they take that and they just kind of, they take that core idea and they um, take it to this whole other level. They do that partly by sort of where day of the dead ends is kind of about a half an hour into this movie where the shit breaks loose and then they're forced out into the world. Uh, I think like all credit should go to this child actor. She's really amazing. Um, Gemma Ardernan is really great in this movie, really kind of raw and emotional in a way. And I don't really like, I'm not that familiar with her 
work, but I don't see her in a lot of other like, than the like seven movies you've seen. Of her. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you are as familiar as any. She seemed other like one American of those people. <laughs> she seemed like one of those people that sort of flirted with wider American exposure for a while, but then has kind of gone away. I guess is more my point. Oh yeah, it's it's a conversation I wanted us to have. Is like yeah, I I don't understand why she's not like a little more famous. She's really great. She's yeah. in. Well, she's in a lot of like blockbuster stuff, but it's all like garbage. Like she was in Prince of Persia, she was in Clash yeah. of the Titans. Yeah, she was a Bond girl at one point, I think, in uh, Quantum of Solace. Like it, she does so, a lot of period movies though, too. Yeah, like yeah. Uh, not Anna Green Gables, but that kind of era type stuff. Um, yeah. and you know, and the other thing is like this movie has freaking Glenn Close in it, which is yeah. incredible. It is weird. And it's, it's really great. It's so like, weird. that's a role that could have been really over the top and hacky in the wrong hands. And, and even she is a little unsure with, like, some of the things she has to say. But, man, she, like, chews scenery. It's just, like, really great watching somebody like that work. Like, somebody w who's so good at the craft like that and taking on this genre role and really just, like, killing it. So you have this great ensemble cast. It's very tense. Uh, if I have a complaint, it's sort of like... They get to this hospital. There's this great sequence of scenes in the hospital. There's a nice little intercut back and forth between Glenn Close talking with, um, what's the girl's name? Melanie. Uh, Melanie. And then Gemma Arterton is is following a noise down a hallway, and it's like they cut it back and forth, and it's just like really nice tension. Once they get out of the hospital, though, the next portion of the film gets a little um, redundant and a little like you kind of keep seeing the same scenes over and over like they send the girl out and she's wandering around like eats a cat or something and <laughs> by the way those masks are super not secure like they're supposed they act like there's locked to her head and when it when go time comes she just goes and just pulls it off yeah yeah, yeah. which is kind of kind well, of they have weird. her uh they have her handcuffed yeah. a lot of it too yeah but, but yeah but so yeah. like that's a little kind of yeah. but for me like i was a little distracted at times during these portions but it really comes around in the end um Pretty tense finale, great emotional stuff. I love, I mean, we, we don't have to talk about it right now, but I just love the final image. It's such a great, depressing, but also kind of like, oh, that's kind of a cool ending. Yeah. It yeah, kinda... I think one of the one of the really interesting things about this movie is that the tension in, in some parts is based around, like, her versus everyone that's keeping her. But really, you know, like, you think the direction they're going to go is like, oh, she's feral and she's going to, like, eat them and whatever. Uh, and they do a little bit of that, but that's not the focus of the entire movie. And I think it's similar to the way that the military characters are drawn out. Like, it, you know, that's one thing I think this movie really has going for it is that they play on lots of your, they play on your expectations of like what these movies usually are like and just kind of subvert them in subtle ways that I think makes it, makes it really interesting to watch. Because if it would just be yeah. kind of by the numbers, like there's a scene where she's like, you know, like sniffing and they're like oh my god is she gonna kill us whatever and like they do that a little bit but that's not the focus of the entire and in movie, a lot of ways this, so good. yeah and in a lot of ways a subversion comes from them uh playing with a trope that's really well worn and then being like oh no actually we're gonna put a lot of thought into this and like, yeah do well because the actual that... well the, i was sorry to interrupt mark but to go along with what you're saying i the actual message behind this movie is actually super deep and super new as far as these types of movies goes. I mean, you start talking about evolution and everything else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like what Eric's talking about with Day of the Dead, it's like it it hits on that, but like, you know, the the most human zombie in that movie was Bub, and it's, you know, kind of a goofy. He's, it's more of like a lovable characterization, right, of like, you know, like Eric just did the salute on video. <laughs> he can like do the salute, and he like he has a Walkman that he listens to. Uh, he's also he reading. Should... He's also reading um, Salem's Lot, I believe it is. Yeah. Oh, really? Or he picks also, it up. And he's like... If you're a younger listener, you may want to take a moment and Google what a Walkman is and see if you can uh, figure out what that is. <laughs> They've all seen Guardians of the Galaxy. Or if you've seen yeah. Guardians yeah. of the Galaxy, right? <laughs> um, so, but it, you know, and I, I can't remember who brought it up originally, but I do think, despite the kind of questionable. Uh, uh, other children's actors in this movie i thought i did think that that kind of like alpha scene was really interesting i thought like the set the, it's, i it's, mean uh, the idea of it was really interesting just a little bit of the execution was well like... there's just like some really like the cool thing about it was it you know it's like the classic example of like show don't tell like it's almost like a five minute scene 
and you really don't know what the fuck's going on. Well, and it's great. Nobody it. nobody and... ever looks at the camera and goes like, oh, she's becoming the alpha. But like, look, bro, I've seen the Planet of the Apes movie, the Brian yeah. Cox. I know how you get to the top of the chain, you know? Yeah, well, we watched Liam Neeson a... box wolves. Yeah, you, you murder the person at the top of the chain with a baseball bat, and then you're the top person. But it's so weird, right? Like, you've never seen, like, a little zombie or half zombie child play alpha over other half over children. like yeah. zombie like but they're like tribal that's what was interesting about them like they they kind of had like tribal dress on well i wasn't sure when they first oh that's just kind of they and definitely. like a, yeah, they and like a hierarchy they look like the lost boys or like, <laughs> yeah. yeah no yeah from 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 uh peter pan and, yeah. Glenn, and yeah. you know and there's a little bit of exposition there like glenn close explains that this is the the, what they discover is that these children are basically like the second stage of this fungus. Like the first stage cha- just turns you into like mega murder zombie. The second stage is this thing where she explains that, you know, the fungus is like, I don't know. It's, well, it's, it's symbiotically. It's not that they're second stage. They're, yeah, like they were all infected in utero. That's why they're, they're second all. Generation. Oh, second generation. Oh, I got you. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Which so is now like, the fungus uh, is living as a symbiote. You might yeah, say so... the fungus is among us. Yeah. I mean, you, you're holding on to that, weren't you? Uh, the, uh, I mean, it, go, it kind of <laughs> goes without saying, we are far beyond the, uh, if you read the synopsis, it's all about the school in the beginning, so there's really no uh, <laughs> no real indication of, like, we pretty much just kind of spoiled the shit out of this, but that was another... Um, what synopsizing I, didn't actually watch the movie, Mark, that was the problem. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, but I thought that was another, like, really cr- kind of crazy reveal, which, like, that sort of makes sense, uh, but it was like, Oh yeah, they found the moms all hollowed out. Like the zombies, like yeah. ate their way out of the womb. I was like, Jesus Christ! That's that's gross. Super gross. I mean, there's some stuff in this movie that's like pretty grim. And there's Not a great... to mention the fact that it's Glenn Close telling us well, that the babies cored out their mothers. But there's a lot going on yeah. in that scene too, right? It's the first time that Glenn Close really talks to uh, Mel- Melanie like she's in a, like she's a real human. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of the underlying tension in a lot of the film is. Glenn Close wants to is using the children and she's trying to find a vaccine, much like Day of the Dead. And she wants to she thinks that this girl will be because she's so smart and is able to control herself that uh or to an extent that she's like the key to it, but Gemma um Arterton has formed a bond with her and so there's this tension there and Glenn Close is very much against humanizing them for that reason, but in this scene it's like really the first moment. You know, they've just gone through a bunch of life you know very harrowing stuff and she kind of is like talking to her like a human for the first and it's a slow unraveling thing but she's also telling her this horrific story uh it's just a really fun really well done scene i thought well i think that you get a moment like that for most of the characters I, i thought especially with the two soldiers that stick around the longest like they in the beginning keep referring to Melanie as it and they won't make eye contact with her and they want her to wear a muzzle and just getting to watch them both start to acknowledge her humanity I thought was really interesting, particularly the younger of the two and his name I don't remember. You know, and doing yeah. doing getting to any kind of character development in a film like this is really difficult because your number one thing is you're setting up a, a roller coaster, right? Like you're setting up a scenario. Like the, this isn't right. a movie that takes place over – months where you can tell this long it's like days maybe you know yeah and since we're already getting spoiler and i'm going to talk about a spoiler moment here too but it goes along with that same moment in, with glenn close that we're talking about that scene she's explaining everything that's going on and it's obvious that she's trying to plead with melanie to hey i need your brain to make this vaccination i could save everybody and she's trying to convince her on how bad it is and we can save your teacher we can save Gemma. everybody will be happy uh, and, you know, Melanie, you could tell Melanie really loves Gemma. She's thinking about it and contemplating on it. But about that moment that she sits up and says, why should we die so you could live? It's like, oh, Jesus, that gave me chills. Right. And she turned like that. And it was an amazing scene to watch that little girl yeah. turn like that. And, like, there's this great So we are full. We should warn. Uh, too late. But full spoiler <laughs> turn to a point. Late. The we other spoiled, like, 93%. We're going to go the last seven. The other yeah. great scene... Um, after that, so the very end or end end is where she lights the fungus tree, the giant, you know, monolith on fire, which releases all the pods, which is basically just like more, it's very, uh, uh, alien covenant John, 
but it releases more death zombie fungus into the air, like all of it. Like basically, they've, well, they've been ma- saying like this makes it airborne. They've been saying I like this is over a mushroom in my front yard Ugh. earlier today, and I'm very afraid. <laughs> they've been saying that like if you do, you know, if those pods ever open, like it'll be the end of the world. And she goes back to the pod where she had locked the people in. Can, thinking, it, like, can oh, I interrupt you? Qu- sorry, can I interrupt you quick on that? I just one thing I thought was kind of ridiculous about this was right after she was like, if any of these pods open, it's the end of the world. She like picks one up and like tucks it in her, you know, like just yeah. like tucks it in her bag and takes it with her. It's like, um, uh, it leads, I don't know if I'd want to carry around. If the, the world's going to end, you want to have it right next to you. So it, yeah. it leads to this great moment too, where the, uh, she's, she goes back and the sergeant got out and he's like getting infected and, and he's like saying, Oh Jesus, why would you do that or something? And, she kind of says like you know like it's not the end of the world it's just not your time anymore or something along those lines yeah it's just not yours anymore that's like (laughs) such a powerful line because it's really kind of what the whole movie it's it's an interesting thing to frame a zombie movie like that like guess what in the end like it's not about finding a cure or like in day of the dead like finding a a island somewhere you where you can hang out like actually it's just about the end of humanity like you guys had a good run and you know, something new. And I like the matter something of fact this, that she told him too. She's like, "Hey, I didn't want this to. Ha- I didn't want you to get hurt when I did this, but it's got to happen. So, sorry about your luck." Yeah. <laughs> well, and it's interesting too. I think how hard before Melanie's line about you know when she's talking to Glenn Close and she says, "Why should we die for you?" When they're having that conversation at that point, they are having a hard time getting in touch with any other humans. Right, and the only other base they've contacted is falling, and so it's such, a, it's such an interesting point of like, even if you find a vaccine, there might not be any quote unquote regular people left, and so what is the point? Is it really worth killing a child yeah. to have this vaccine? But the people yeah. being un- totally unwilling to let go, I mean, understandably so, is really yeah. interesting. She's basically like, it's gonna help these two people that you know. <laughs> That's right. why and I have to yeah. kill you. She's dying at that point too, so it's not gonna yeah. help her. Yeah. Yeah, you know another scene that was really well done that we like skipped over, but you know you you actually spent about a half an hour in the school, the first first act almost, and like it's um but it goes by fast because it's really interesting and you're you're learning the kind of day to day and the yeah. scene where the ship breaks loose is really cool because you don't see the big part of it happen and there's so there's a scene where they they've decided like okay we're we're gonna take her to the science place to get science to death. And they've got him in these Hannibal Lecter wheelchairs, and the sergeant who actual lines from the movie. The sergeant who we stay with the rest of the movie, he is wheeling uh, Melanie across this like, and it's totally Day of the Dead. Like they are above ground in this kind of army facility. There's a fence all around, and there's kind of some commotion going on. And a guy runs by and he says, "Captain, they knocked down the fence and blah blah blah. What should we do?" And he goes, "He goes flamethrower, short bursts." Which, by the way, is like the most badass thing that you could say as like nonchalantly as he says. <laughs> But then, but the way that it's treated, it seems very uh, routine. Like, oh, all right, yeah, they got it. But then, like, you know, they show the whole, they show this whole scene of him walking across the whole compound, and you just see, like, oh, there's people running in this direction, and oh, there's, like, a truck going that way. And I don't know, you just think it's kind of routine, but maybe it's bad. But then you don't see anything else. And then you're in the lab with Glenn Close, and then the next thing you know, like, oh, guess what? There's zombies in here. And yeah. I kind of love that they didn't show it because it, it really leaves it a lot up to the imagination. And then you're like, oh, God, that actually – well, then you think first, back like, to the scene and you're like, oh, it actually was, like, popping off when we saw that. Yeah. And that makes that full first full reveal because, I mean, we see the zombies beforehand when he first goes upstairs. But it looks like something out of The Walking Dead. They're all kind of milling around this fence outside trying, you know, walking into the fence over and over. It looks fairly typical. It's when they finally show up down there and you see somewhere off in the distance in the hallway, you see one of them sprinting at them down the hall through the shadows. It's like, oh, shit, they're fast. Well, I think it kind of forces you to react to that situation like Melanie is because she doesn't know what's happening outside. So when they're not giving her information, they're just walking her through, you're not getting any information either. Ah, that is true. Though I, That does make us just as clueless as she was. So that is an interesting uh, perspective of it. Yes. I agree. I didn't think of that watching it, but <laughs> we it's are, like, I mean, hell yeah. We are sort of jumping all over the place too, but one one other thing that I really appreciated in terms of uh, comparison to other zombie movies is that is their like dormant state. So like that it yeah, is that not, was really it cool. is not um yeah. 
it's not abnormal to have a scene in a zombie movie where like you know there's hundreds of them like shambling around just really slowly but in this movie they're like at least in the the part of the movie where they're like trying to get past them but they're like just completely still which i thought was a really cool visual of like them trying to trying to sneak by them and also that uh this movie does not have a lot of jump scares and but one of the closest things to the jump scare is when she takes the blanket off of the stroller and i was i don't know what i expected but i was not ready yeah for that, that was uh, that was and like the and and like speaking of badass glenn close wants to check this stroller out because she thinks there might be like a baby in there and because they can't see you it's like just like you know they were saying like it's just the scent she like strolls in front of the zombie and sticks her foot out to stop the stroller and then and the zombie just goes yeah but she did it like, too so it was so it made it for the brainless zombie they think they just walked in well that's something. what i'm saying but how yeah. like but how badass is that that she just was like oh whatever i'm not, i ain't afraid of no zombie i really hope that dog made it yeah, <laughs> I don't it think was, it's gonna end well. I really I was what like, what did I either. think of the like design of the zombies since they are plant based and not a virus? I thought they were cool and they're, really they're fun. Out. Actually, it's a yeah. little different from a plant. Oh, they're right. a bunch of fun guys. <laughs> they, uh, to Mark's point too, because I thought the, like the the way they did the face makeup and stuff, and you had little growths and you know like pustules and stuff like that was cool. But then knowing that they were plant based zombies. And then, like, when Mark was talking about, you see them when they're dormant, and then they're basically just kind of standing there in large clusters that was creepy as shit, because you'd see them twitch every once in a while and whatnot, and they, they, that was, like, really effective, I thought. Because you don't really know what a plant-based zombie would be, but you're when you see them standing there like that, just stock still. I think the, more I think yeah. the, um, the effects in this movie in general I thought were really good. They're pretty understated. Um, and I and I thought that really worked for it. I I loved the visual of that like giant zombie fungus tree thing. Like that can yeah. very that can very easily get into like uh, sci-fi network movie territory. Sure. And, yeah. and for whatever reason, that I, I I think they just did a great job with it. I thought that it was a, like yeah. a really cool visual. Um, they did a good job with explaining it too, because. Glenn Close stumbled across it. She's like, I'd heard of this happening, but they get too many of them in a cluster, and basically they die, and it's the next stage of the fungus, and it grows out of a pile of dead zombies. It just made me think of Marina Towers in Chicago because that's kind of what it looked like. <laughs> the the like circle thingies? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I agree, Mark. I was actually going to comment, too. I thought not just that, but like really all of the scenery was was CGI. There's a lot of like uh, you know, post-apocalyptic landscape type shots and, and even like cityscapes. And they, they I thought were better than average, mm. I would say. Yeah. Like the, the, the design of them was solid. And it is interesting. I mean, um, there's a lot more sort of like vegetation. It's not just the zombies being fung fungus, fungi. Uh, the, the, um, it just feels like that's the direction they wanted to go. It's like the, the movie itself has like a greenish hue to a lot of it um well it makes yeah. it sense though because the world's getting ended essentially by a, a plant yeah no, no, fungus. No. so i mean it makes sense but they also i think they did it in a fashion that made it because they said it was like 20 years after the whole outbreak started mm -hmm. at this point in the movie i think they'd mentioned offhand and it seemed realistic and not like completely over the top and cheesy like something like that uh, will smith movie and whatnot it seemed where i am like like yeah it seemed pretty realistic and everything. It was, uh, I, I thought it was really well done. I yeah. also, to speak to the realism of some of the scenery shots, I don't know if anyone else read the IMDb trivia, but some of the aerial shots of scenery were actually of Chernobyl. Oh. Which is maybe why yeah, cool, they though. looked very realistic and kind of like 20 plus years afterwards, what would what something would look like when people aren't I, around. I anymore. didn't recognize it without random bears. Without <laughs> Yuri. Yuri. Without Jesse McCartney, you could never identify Chernobyl. So yeah, God, there not so with, uh, few with, bears in those overhead With shots. current events, Yuri takes on such a darker pall to me now. That's oh, true. I don't know if I, I, uh, I, don't know if I trust Yuri. Yuri. <laughs> I didn't uh, read Actually, the didn't it, on IMDb. Sorry, didn't it turn out that uh, Yuri like, killed his wife or something? Who, Yuri? Didn't he, or no, he killed his wife's rabbit. <laughs> Do you remember that? We found uh -huh. that out about him because he was in that other movie we did recently. Like, Yuri oh, the person. 
Uh, you're just like down on a different you route. You mean the actor, things. right? <laughs> just thinking about Yuri. Not Yuri the movie. I character. mean the actor who plays Yuri, yes. <laughs> um, no, but so I was going to say, I didn't read the trivia on IMDb, but I did see the IMDb keywords. One of the top ones, or at least like the ones that show up at the top on IMDb, was whitewashing. So I actually did look this up because I was like, what oh, the fuck yeah. are they talking about? So apparently in the book, uh, the Gemma Arterton character is a black character and based on the imdb keywords there was some issue. and melanie is white in the book they switched them oh really yeah melanie has a blonde hair is described as having blonde hair and blue eyes in the book oh interesting I, that part i didn't get to i just saw that uh it was a it was like i like searched like girl with all the gifts racism and like one of the things it was like four or five different like blah it, none of them were like official articles it was all like people like personal tumblers and shit like am that I, am i racist <laughs> question mark? well i will say i mean i will say it's really cool that it's it's just great to see glenn close in this movie like i think that women in hollywood and, and women and men but especially women of a certain age like they just don't have those kinds of roles to dig into that much anymore there's like a you know there's a very small well men do because men there's do always a, room for definitely like a, to a larger extent you know, yeah i will say that dude. but there's you know there's definitely like a, a small group of people who get those roles when they do show up so i think like if anything this movie proves that there's a wealth of talent out there like the genre directors could actually like really tap into and start giving these people some bet. Like she kills it in this movie, and it's a really, it's a really strong role. You know what I mean? Like she's yeah. so. I mean, that was just if really. They, it's cool if to they see. They didn't call Brian Cox and offer him that role first. I'd be <laughs> oh my god! What if Glenn Close and Brian Cox were like, like buddy scientists? Yeah, oh, right. Cox is baby, baby would, zombie too. That would be dope. Uh, Glenn Close, not for nothing, did stab the living shit out of a zombie with a piece of broken glass, which yeah. was a pretty serious. Also, mm -hmm. smashed yeah. someone one of their heads with a fire hydrant, mm -hmm. yeah. and just like immediately yeah. caved it in. I believe that is a fire extinguisher, Sophie. <laughs> What that I would say? be an fire incredible hydrant? feat of strength. She, she actually ripped a fire hydrant yeah. out of the ground. That would be an incredible Glenn feat Close of strength if 70-year-old Glenn Close picked up a fire hydrant. Yeah. yeah. My favorite scene in the movie when she rips the fire hydrant out of the ground. Yeah. yeah. All right, I think guys. it'd be cool to see her. I mean, she's done this in uh, Guardians of the Galaxy now, so I think it would be cool to see her career, as big as it's been, start taking the Brian Cox turn. Yeah. yeah. Like, is that like is it the first time you're in a movie with a monkey jail? Yeah. Um, when does when does that Planet of the Apes movie comes out? Because that looks it's uh, July. That's sure. amazing. I can't oh, wait, bro. Would you recommend this movie, Mark? Definitely, Sophie. I would, but can I add one more thought? Sure. We would be remiss to not mention this since Cece was going to be on the show and then wasn't, and I won't do it as well as she probably would have. But did anyone else notice that the story that Gemma Arterton's character tells at the beginning is the story of Pandora opening? This box that was such mm -hmm. a beautiful like bookend to the story. Mm -hmm. Cece would have done a better job, but it was really nice. So yeah. I would recommend the movie. <laughs> I did think about it when she was telling the story, and then I actually watched this in two sittings over two days, and then I forgot about it when I went back to watch it the second day. Yeah. So thanks Pandora's for Pandora's fungus pod. Yeah. 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 I get it. Hey John. <laughs> yes. Would you recommend this? Yes. Official BGH ruling, is this in consideration for my 2017 list? Yes, it is. Because? It, it's listed as a U.S. release in 2017. Oh, so, interesting. And if you yes. saw it at some festival, guess what? I don't care. Yeah. No, no. I mean, like, it came out in the U.K. in 2016. It definitely made the rounds in 2017, oh, or 2016, but it was only widely available in 2017, so we're counting this. That doesn't count. Casey's vaping. Casey, would you recommend this? Absolutely. Everybody just got to hear Casey vaping. I hope you yes, enjoyed that. Sorry. <laughs> All right, guys. That's gonna do it for Love vaping. That's gonna do it with for uh with for and the girl with all the <laughs> gifts. Let's take yeah. a quick break and do some fan mail. Everyone is entitled to one good scare. I've had my share. Twenty years have passed since that fateful night. Do you know what day it is? Halloween. 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 And they thought the terror was dead and gone. Hey, you know, think Michael Myers never found his body. They were wrong. <laughs> it finally ends here. Halloween H2O. 
Hey, I'm Josh McDonald, writer of The Corridor, and writer-director of the short film Game. And you are listening to Bloody Good Horror. Send your emails to info at bloodygoodhorror.com or hit us up on Twitter at BGHorror with the hashtag AskBGH. And don't forget to pick up back episodes of the show at podcast.bloodygoodhorror.com. And we are back. In the video right now, Mark, this gif of this little kid that is totally like you when you were a kid. <laughs> Dancing. Swag. Oh, God, I gotta make that small, though. That is, like, a seizure waiting to happen. Holy shit. Uh, if you've ever been on the internet, it's the it's the crazy the crazy frog kid crazy video. Frog kid. The skinny kid with the glasses. Oh, and I'll put this foghorn leghorn thing in here, too. Oh, my God. I spent... If I was uh, quiet, I, it was because I was worried about my connection, but also because I was probably tanking my connection by looking up as many ridiculous pictures of Foghorn Leghorn as I could possibly find. <laughs> yeah, can we get back to that now? Because what? <laughs> I, I like. I'm still mind blown that you guys don't like Foghorn Leghorn. I'm just. I. I love that we came back to it. <laughs> I. You were just. The thing about it was that when I asked you. I thought that you might have an answer, and you sort of played coy for a second, like <laughs> yeah. you didn't know what your answer was. And Actually, my thesis in college was about foghorn like I don't know. I knew. I, I, I got that teed up, man. I would have taken you for a Pepe Le Pew guy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're totally <laughs> Pepe Le Pew. Come on. Yeah. Oh, Maybe boy. that's how yeah. Eric sees you. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I mean, if I had to pick a second, it's Bug Bunny. Like, that's freaking oh, easy. Yeah. So... <laughs> But uh, <laughs> well, fucking duh. I'm gonna go with Porky Pig. Yeah. Porky, come on. Well, I mean, Bubba Bu Beer Guts was yeah, is a very right. Porky the Pig kind Bubba, of thing Bubba, to do. Bubba, Bubba and he also Bubba. doesn't like to wear pants, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he fucking needs pants. Info at mm. bloodygoodhorror.com. That's how you get in touch with us. Nobody did again. We we released the last show like days like three days ago, so people, it usually time. takes a few days before people start rolling in. Um, so yeah, Mark, what about Twitter? Ooh, girl. Well, we use, uh, we use two hashtags here in the BGH podcast. The first one being BGH classics. So if you are a patron at patreon.com slash bloody good horror, and you're listening to one of our wonderful back episodes and you hear something silly that you think you should bring to our attention, tweet it to us with the hashtag BGH classics, and we will read it. This first one is from Pittman 1382. Uh, Schnars tells Eric, and if he's going to jump on the Midnight Meat Train jerk-off bandwagon. <laughs> okay. Oh, John, you saw Epis it. Episode 49, Feast 2. Remember the Feast movies? Oh, man. Oh, Feast. yeah. Feast oh, 2, a... that movie is fucking terrible. Ridiculously so bad. bad. <laughs> yeah. Feast 1 was really kind of cool. Just some of the worst fucking movies that we've ever watched. The Feast movies. Uh, we did Feast 3, too, right? I don't think we did Feast 3. No, we totally... Three. I'm pretty sure we did them. Two, uh, no, I thought, two sloppy seconds? No, I thought those? we did them back-to-back. -back. I thought we did both. Jesus Christ, I don't... We know. might have. I don't know. I don't know. Go look. Somebody go look. I don't think we did. Jesus Christ. I would go with go no. But... Oh, this is, a, this is a really great one. Uh, this is from Mr. Finn 607 Okay, moving on. John, episodes 10 through 426. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Uh, that's is, really good. He he can be dismissive. It hurts my feelings. It's always when I'm talking about something that I find really important. All right. Sometimes we just got to move on. Okay. We, do not, we do not want to open this can of worms of people paying attention when other people are talking. <laughs> it's just not a, uh, not a place we should go. All right. Next one is from that baseball Joe. Uh, you don't make salsa in a blender. This movie's bullshit. Uh, that was Joe, episode 328. Yeah. And blender. actually, you totally do. So I don't. I think I remember like ask, you know, being confused by that at the time. You make good salsa in a blender. Maybe Joe likes a really rustic salsa. Maybe. He just... just chunks just hit the whole everything yeah, just, just here's, it. here's a whole peeled tomato out of a can have fun kids that's right <laughs> i don't judge how joe makes salsa. there is a middle ground there's a middle <laughs> ground there <laughs> this guy probably just bites a whole tomato <laughs> all right next one 
Uh, it's from Library O Congress <laughs> with one S. <laughs> Eric okay. discussing David Duchovny. His few lines are delivered with the tact of a punch to the sack. Yeah. Episode thirty six, <laughs> X Files. Oh, remember that X Files movie that came out? It was about yeah. it was I about dog heads or something. Like at was the end, there aliens? was something about they were reading. No, no, but at the end, it at the end it just ended up being about like rogue Russian scientists who were reanimating animals or some shit. John, you're thinking about the first X Files movie. Yeah, the second X Files movie had nothing to do with aliens whatsoever. Like they just were asked to come in and investigate this case with exhibit. There, there was ice though. And Amanda Peet. In, in the first one with with aliens. No, we only. <laughs> All right, whatever. Jo we only we reviewed. One, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, no, Was we there a reviewed. One? We reviewed the there second two, one yeah. on the show. The first one came out like 20 years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, we reviewed the new one though, like the yeah, new. Yeah, like the future. Yeah, that one was called "I Want to Believe." Yeah, and it had not... no, no. Is no, that it was what this... the future wasn't it? I want to. Believe. No, I think John's right. It was I want to believe, but it had nothing to do with aliens, like whatsoever. Yeah, Fight the Future is the one with aliens and ice, because it's the only one I've seen. I haven't seen the one no. that you guys reviewed. You're thinking about the one with, with Foghorn Leghorn in it, John. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I would fucking watch that movie. I like, said, Foghorn what, and Leghorn what, versus what, aliens. What, what, like a top what five. aliens? Oh man. Uh, yeah. I do declare. All right. <laughs> 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 Last one. Technically not a BGH classic because it was from two episodes uh, ago, but it says They're Eric, all although romantical... That's true. Although romantical isn't a word, please start using it on a regular basis. <laughs> I do, actually. Just day-to-day -day life. Walking around life. Usually when you're talk talking about John. Mm. <laughs> oh, girl. Alright, that's it for the BGH classics. Uh, so we also use the hashtag AskBGH, so if you have a question and you want us to answer it, uh, tweet it to us with the hashtag AskBGH and we, we will do our best. This first one is from Jay Gaona. Gaona, 91. Do you think infection style zombies are a good route for the genre itself? I think runners just provide a bigger threat. Yeah, and it was kind of cool how they play. Like, I like that, but it was cool how they juxtaposed that with the fact that they could kind of be dormant and just sit there and you can walk by them. And then even when they woke up, it was like that was a really cool scene where kind of one at a time was waking up and they were able to sort yeah. of... Those guns were sweet, by the way. Those guns were awesome. Awesome movie guns. What was funny, though, because they made a big deal going into this, that scene about how make sure you have your uh, suppressors on your gun and they were using the hollow tips and she asked him why and he said because they go in one side, come out, they don't come out the other. Much less blood spread and it's quieter. And then when that first time that guy shows up and fires his rifle without the suppressor on it, you're like, oh, Jesus Christ, man. It's well, and then, yeah, loud. at one point, Glenn Close just has a pistol, and Glenn Close is just shooting shit. She, does, she doesn't follow your stupid zombie rules. Yeah, I do what I want. I'm Glenn Close. You know how I mean, many Oscars right. I have? Yeah, that's right. Six? All right, was next it six, one? John? Or was it, nominated, was it nominated six times, or she has six? I... You said, All it, I remember, you said it earlier. No, I know. it's. It was on the like description. I'm going to pull it up. The description for the movie on Amazon. That's like how it was described. Uh, oh, God damn it. I'll, it's not I'll actually it. important. Yeah, I just thought Next you knew. It's from I Earn Chef. Uh, Eric will probably have to answer this. Who made the beat with the Dexter sample, or where is it from? I do not it's know. It's in a bumper you play. I don't have it off the top of my head, but if um, it is dope, so... Thank you for recognizing that. <laughs> um, you can go to YouTube. I don't know who it's from, but confirmed dope. Dopeness. That's a quote. You go to YouTube and search Dexter Remix, and I'm sure you will find it. That's all I did. To, I just searched horror remix and went, went for search days. Search for Dopester Remix. Yeah. All right. Dope Here, horror uh, remix. Really quick. Here we go. The description from Amazon. Six-time Academy Award nominee Glenn Close nominee. stars in a post-apocalyptic story about a devastating disease that eradicates free will and turns its victims into flesh-eating hungries. Like, yeah. it tells you legitimately nothing about them. I mean, I guess you know. eradicates little... free will is a weird addition. It is. Yeah, like, why? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, sounds like a, that sounds like a movie guide thing. It also makes it sound like it's a movie about Glenn Close. <laughs> like, it's very strange. Yeah. Right, she's like John? the third most important. If her turn out, that movie was about her. Yeah. Listen, John. <laughs> That's a new synopsis. Glenn if you Close had Glenn Close in your movie... <laughs> if, if you had Glenn Close in your movie, you would base all of your... your marketing on her too 
No, you but I see, see the rest of the marketing is not about her. You wouldn't even know she was in it based on like the posters and shit like that. I mean, I think her name's on the poster, but it's like clearly Amazon when people are like scanning through like, oh, what should I watch? Like, I've never heard of this movie. And then they're like, oh, Glenn Close is in it. You know, I don't know, whatever. We could go, I could go down a little bit of a rabbit hole here, but we won't. I already stopped listening. You want to see that. Glenn Close deadlift a fire hydrant? <laughs> deadlift. Yeah, it's actually, it's actually this new CrossFit movie starring Glenn Close. You better get Glenn Close in the next just, uh, Sinister movie. We're just lift, like uh, fighting with Lynch Lin Shea. Lin Shea. Yeah, we lift, <laughs> Lin we're her and Lynn Shea just close. like lift fire hydrants and big like tr uh, monster truck tires and flip them over and stuff. You get a great training montage. For that thing with there the pegs go. on the wall. <laughs> Love it. Uh, so I'm like, it's, from, it's, it's, uh, it's American Ninja Warrior, the movie, starring Glenn Close <laughs> and Lynn Shea and Brian Cox. <laughs> it's at, in theaters this summer, folks. Get, get excited. Now I'm done. Right. Next one. It's from Lycanthrology. <laughs> How tired is Eric, really? Right now, <laughs> I feel great. He's about to be on vacation, though. Like, I'm I'd sleepy. Be yeah, I, I have some vacation uh, buzz going on, but... Usually when we're recording this on like a Wednesday, I'm real tired by this time. But I'm feeling good though. Maybe we should do this on Sunday more often. It's a competition usually, me versus Eric, who's like gonna fall asleep more on oh, the show. You're better at hiding it than I am though, because I have to like keep things oh, moving boy. along. The end. I get real, real dicey. Next one, also from Black Anthology. What's your favorite slash least favorite zombie type in terms of creation? Hmm. I think this was actually um, this was actually one of my favorites just because it seemed, I mean, obviously the science of the thing is dubious, but it actually, to John's point, like they really they really illustrated it. They kind of like it it made sense as much as that sort of thing can make sense. I hate. Yeah, I mean, how just... many other types are there? Like, what are the types well, that like we've got shufflers? Know. There's versus fast and runners. slow, right? But we got range zombies for, from 28 Days Later. For me, yeah. it's more of an aesthetic thing of like, I hate when they're just people that are green. Like, oh, we didn't have a lot of money, so we just paint them green, mm -hmm. and then they're just people. Yeah. I don't like that. Or when I like... like when they're slow though. Like I don't. I'm. I actually think I'm. Maybe it's like I'm old school or something, but I think I prefer a shuffler to a runner. I get why the runners are scarier in the films. Like one of the what if you made a movie previous... with both, where they were like different genus, genuses. Of <laughs> yeah, I, I mean you could do that. And then Glenn I Close like uh, I like the me. Dead Alive zombies, where sometimes they're really good at kung fu, and sometimes they're a baby <laughs> that's also a little person that's also a doll. No, you know and what? Sometimes it's Mark. just a giant naked mom on sometimes, top of the house. You know, sometimes yeah. headless with a lawn gnome shoved in the top no, of their stump. Do Deadites count? Well. Because I feel like Deadites from Evil Dead are probably up there for me. Yeah, I yeah, that's that what I, I would... think I would actually count that as a similar school of zombies. They're more of possessed. Zombies. They're more yeah. demons, though, don't you think? Don't you think they're demons mm. more than zombies? I mean, they're, oh, well. they're possessed. Yeah, I suppose so. Mm. I think that like my least favorite is like World War Z. Every zombie moves as one kind of zombie. They did, yeah, that wasn't great. I mean. Yeah, there were some kind of literally cool... the only thing I remember from that movie is that one scene where they're all like climbing up the wall, yeah. and also the scene. But where... it's like a wave, like they were waving like water up over the wall. That and that was I actually kind of cool. I liked it in cool. Train to Busan for some reason, but I did not like it in World War Z. Well, it's, there's more. I think in Train to Busan, it's like a little bit more real. Like you know, you get more close ups and stuff. Whereas World War Z was like there was. I feel like there was like so few close ups. It was all these just like sprawling shots. Of, yeah, well, they were they they were going for like FX splurge yeah they splurge all right there Are you go that's about as comprehensive of an answer to that question as you're going to get next one a from sequel Fort... to world war z uh, uh i don't think there are there, one. there aren't any letters after z in the alphabet so no there's one listed <laughs> on one. imdb but it has like zero information it looks like one of those things where somebody just added it there but it's not a real thing yet they're hoping it becomes real hmm. Uh, guys, fun fact, if you uh, tweet with the hashtag Twin Peaks, you get a fun little Black Lodge icon next to the next to the hashtag. Isn't that cute? Anywho, next one is from Four Color Craig. Uh, with VHS tapes estimated to have just 15 to 20 years of life left, are there any VHS horror titles that need to be preserved? And this tweet comes with a cover image of Emmett Otto's Junk Band Christmas, hmm. which I, is, is particularly uh, relevant in this case because the copy that Eric and I used to watch as a kid, 
had three things on it. It had Emma Daughter's Jug Band Christmas. It had a very Brady Christmas. Yes. And it had a 10-minute clip of our father talking about police using ATVs to chase people through graveyards. Yeah, and I, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty positive I still, I still have that, actually. And that oh is the God. warbliest VHS. It was, the like new, the it was like 1980s, and it was the news was doing a story about how cops, because like the town we grew up in had a lot of like woodland areas, oh and there were trails, God. and they were they had yes. had some instances of people where they had to chase people into the woods or whatever, or they had people on ATVs. So the police were going to start using ATVs, so the news person was like, well, I'm going to go interview somebody about ATVs, and my dad owned a motorcycle shop and sold that shit so they went and talked to them talked to him about it and he's like all oh, just 80s doubt man mustache it's really great before so there was tokyo video, drift it's not like a home video of your dad no we then we taped it off the news i see yeah so before i arrive. oh god i'm just gonna make a bad joke a complete non sequitur but i have a or probably don't have any more but had growing up a vhs of the cartoon version of the grinch where in the middle of the movie, it cut to a home video of my uncle who, for a period of time, lived in a treehouse that he built in his friend's backyard. It, blowing up the treehouse with an M80 because the landlord was like, you don't have zoning for this. And so he exploded it while riding out of the house on a zip line with a skateboard duct tape to his feet. And my Are parents you... were like, this is an appropriate thing for our kids to watch. Are you wow. sure that wasn't just Home Alone? Because that sounds like Home Alone. I, I mean, <laughs> that is Home Alone. You're right. Scar on his hand to prove it was actually my uncle. He Home Aloneed it. He Home Aloneed it before it was. Home, home Alone was based on him. He's, uh, <laughs> he was the original. It's, it's the creepier house. when it's an adult. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's oh, that's a man. weird story. Well, I was really hoping you also had like a weird home video in the yeah. middle of a Christmas movie. You know, so it's like. Um, it's interesting. I'm the good thing. Great thing about the internet is like someone's out there doing the Lord's work, right? Like I'm confident somebody's out there saving films that are gonna die. But it really, so many films are digitized now. They're either they're on DVD or they're on the streaming service. Like if your film hasn't been saved, like it might not be worth watching, right? <laughs> like it's probably okay. And I I keep my what VHS. What about Coven? Do you think Coven is like, on a? When my VHS die, then it'll just be like you know, you know. I don't need to preserve what's on there. I want to enjoy it actually on there until it dies. I have some that are 30 years old that are still fine, but I have some that are... I have a funeral for it, I mean, all... some of it's just, you just can't watch them all the time, right? Like it... Well, they do wear down. A lot of it has to do with the environment they're in, like moist, warm, moist environments, though. They won't last as long. If you keep them, um, I think you're, I'm trying to remember, it's either upright or on their side. There's one way where the tape settles weird, and that can cause the... Um, warping. Hmm. Cool. Okay. Good times. <laughs> I'm looking uh, it up right now so we can find out. Great. Next one. Uh, actually, yeah, we have two more. Nope, last one. Sorry, hold on. Store them vertically, not horizontally. Hmm. In a cool, dry spot. And make sure to rewind them. There you go. And keep them away from magnets and speakers. There it is. <laughs> Continue. There you go. Okay, next one. Uh, oh, it's just a it's an R. It's a link, a supplemental link uh, to an NPR story from Four Color Craig. Uh, videotapes are becoming unwatchable as archivists work to save them. So it was a story about. It's definitely. That. I mean, all that stuff is fascinating. I've been reading a lot about preserving video games, and the particular difficulty that modern games are posing because like a game that gets released on a disc is not really the final game because then you take it home and you download a eight gig patch or something and it, they're continually fixed as time goes on so it's like so there's this whole debate about how to preserve that stuff there's a picture in this npr article that if you showed me that picture i would say oh that's definitely a picture of a guy who's preserving wow. vhs tapes yep <laughs> <laughs> that looks like Oh, he's got a breakout cable. Uh, That's awesome. Don't be a dick, Mark. Come on. Got... A, you know, <laughs> I think he's owning it. I think he's fine. He's doing important work. He's got a real broadcast monitor next to his computer. I like that a lot. Yeah. Listen, <laughs> let me put it this way. I've worked in TV stations, and I've actually almost taken one of those home before. Like when they were throwing it out. Like, I'll just I'll take that. I'll take it off your hands for you. There you go. Okay, last one, uh, and also I don't know if this was Casey or Joe, but I, whoever told this person to include Ask BGH uh, via the tweet 
ask BGH for Christ's sakes, gets a, gets a thumbs up. If you have a question, make sure you put the hashtag in it so we can be sure to see it. This last one, it's a real, it's a real thinker. It's from Johnny Worcester. After slaughtering a group of camp counselors, you treat yourself to ice cream. What flavor do you choose? Strawberry, always strawberry, ever, forever. That's all. Cookies and cream, duh. Ooh, it depends on uh, mint chocolate chip or coffee. Hmm. I like to do the strawberry ice cream, and then I put peanut butter on it, and then it's like I'm eating ice cream, but I'm also eating a peanut butter and jelly sandwich at the same time, and hmm. it's amazing. I've right, have you ever been that, to like a frozen yogurt place? It would blow your mind. You have yeah. so many combinations. So when I was a kid, we'd, <laughs> when, I, when I was a kid, we'd go to Friendly's and I would get a Reese's peanut butter cup sundae with strawberry ice cream. Mm. Ooh, mm -hmm. smart! You all gave the wrong answer. The right answer is black raspberry ice cream. That's okay. Yeah, I'm into that. <laughs> but it is not mint chocolate chip. Mm. <laughs> ice cream. Oh my god! Do you, do you guys have insomnia cookies by you? Oh yeah, yeah, we do. What a goddamn wonderful place that is. Wait, also, can you guys get Halo Top ice cream yet? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's okay. We get this other brand I like that is like that, but it's I like it more. I can't remember what the All name right. of it is. Arctic Freeze or something it's called. I live in Delaware. We get things slow, so. Yeah. My wife is way into the Halo Top. <laughs> Although I don't like the name. Uh, I don't like the name because it reminds me of Muffin Top. And yeah, I feel like, me too. I feel like that's opposite of what of the image you're trying to portray when you're talking about like like protein <laughs> ice cream, you know? With like just a little, just a bunch of ice cream poking out of the top. It of should the thing. be called like rock hard <laughs> abs ice cream or something. Like really, it's just... called Halo Top because when you open it, it's like in, it's the opposite of a muffin top. It's not like overflowing. You have like a nice big gap between the lid and where sure. the ice cream starts. Sure. <laughs> hey, so look how ice cream. That just means there's nothing in here. It's just air. Just call it Gap Ice Cream. <laughs> Fall into the gap. All right, that's it for tweets. These flavors sound delicious. <laughs> Info at bloodygoodhorror.com is the email address. The first uh, new class video streaming show we decide is the 9th. Yes, at right? 9 so p.m. Eastern. It's next weekend. Wait. Yes. I can't do that. Okay. So never mind. Date TBD. Yes. Or I could do it over the. I could do it like Saturday or Sunday. Okay, Follow the we'll Twitter. Talk about we'll it. figure. We it haven't out. picked a movie yet either, so. Great, but it's coming though. We it's imminent. It, it will happen. The release is imminent. People, get ready. Uh, also, check us out on Patreon. Patreon.com/slash Bloody Good Horror. Find out how you can see that and also everything else we offer patrons: access to the back catalog, uh, voting on shows when we have open weeks. Um, some cool swag and lots of other fun things. Oh, and Slack, which is still on and popping. Our Slack community continues to grow, it's, which is really it's exciting. It's crack-a-lacking, yeah. I'd say. Uh, very fun. So, um, yeah, thank you for joining us. This has been a review of The Girl with All the Gifts. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll talk to you next week. Adios. See you. Take it easy. Bye-bye.